All right, part number two of the 1996 Subaru Overland Legacy. I don't know what we'll call it. But anyway, today in this video, we're gonna be working on the suspension left. Now I opted for using uh, just a loaded strut from Rock Auto. Um, this is for a 2004 Subaru Forester. I've done this one before just with used parts through a junkyard and it, it was just the right amount of lift for what I wanted. So, plus it's, uh, it's a little bit, it's made for a heavier car. So it's gonna have a better spring rating. You're not gonna get as much of a, a bounce that you get in these legacies. Step one, I got them all laid out in the right order of what I need them. I got my left rear, right rear, left front, right front. Um, you, I'm not gonna go through how to jack up a car and whatever. I mean, you guys can figure that part out. Basically what I'm gonna go through is a little here and there of while I'm working, and we'll make this uh, pretty short and sweet. I'll give you a before picture right here. And then what I'm gonna do is at the end of the video, we'll go through and I'll take some more photos and then I'll show you a, a side by side of before and after. Um, just to kind of show you guys the amount of lift, um, I got, uh, the height that measured it out and I'll put that at the end of the video as well. So stay tuned guys um, Right now what I'm gonna be doing is we got everything set. There's the three nuts on the top to Take it off. We got bolts down here to take off Make sure you get off your uh, Your brake right there and that's really it. It's a pretty simple Swap over and it's a pretty simple way to lift your Subaru Legacy um, I from what I remember, you get about two to two and a half inches, something like that. So stay tuned to the end of the video and we'll see how much we get. Okay, so here's the update. Got the old strut out. Um, one thing I would note in if you're wanting to do this, uh, so the brake line has, a, it's a little tricky. You actually have to either grind off the old mount or you're gonna have to unhook it and rehook it back up and then bleed the brakes at the end, of course. Um, I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about here. So it's that piece right there. Um, I started, I was going to just grind it off, but then I changed my mind and just unhooked it. So that was just easier. Um, as far as removal, other than that, that took as long as pretty much disconnecting the whole thing. So, so here's the side-by-side -side of the new one. Let's see if we can get a good visual. So you can see that it is longer. I mean, probably, I don't know an inch, inch and a half maybe. But this is one thing to be noted is that uh, the actual strut piece, that piece is longer. So you're gonna get more clearance per tire. That'll be a plus. We'll see how it sits. I'll get it in and uh, we'll be back. All right, so now it is in. Uh, a couple notes, if you are taking notes, is I did have to disconnect uh, the upper part of the sway bar here. Um, but it was pretty straightforward and easy. Uh, easy way to get it on and off. Sits in there just right. So it's out of a 2004. That's what these struts are for. In case you're wondering, everything matched up up top. Bolted right up. So if you look at it, it does kind of have a, an angle to it. Um, I might need to get some extended uh, arms here. At some point, I'll definitely look into that uh, before I go crazy or anything like that. So anyway, guys, I'm gonna get the, the tires on and we'll take one last look at it. Okay, so the rear is done. There is the clearance. You can see there's definitely a lot more room as far as uh, spacing for a larger tire. Um, we'll see what size tire we go with, but I mean, you can definitely see from the lift, it goes, it pushes, the, it pushes it forward. So that's where those extended arms would come into play. So now on to the front. All right, so we had to, like you saw in the previous little bit, we uh, installed the rears, but now we pulled them back out to add these spacers right here. Uh, so I'm gonna kinda, Paul and I are gonna walk you through a little bit of how to do this the safer way. And that is with a spring compressor. Um, so he's already got the spring compressor hooked up to it. We gotta pull it apart in order to pull these out. We gotta hammer those out to put the spaces in. So. And no, that's not actually blood on his wrist. We were doing a, a skit at the church earlier. And that's about it, huh? Just a little bit of compression on it. So 
So you want to make sure you're doing this the safe way, not just taking that nut off and expecting, you know, it not to shoot across the room because that will happen. You can look up YouTube videos of that happening. Um, on a Civic, I've done it where I, I did it without a spring compressor, which was pretty sketch, but I'm glad we got this spring compressor. We actually got it from AutoZone. Um, we're able to rent it and then you get all your money back if you bring it back the same day. So we're just getting it busted out. So he's got that little piece off of there. Now we got to pop these out and then we're going to put in the longer bolts with uh, the spacer there. So it's pretty straightforward. We just got a hammer on them. So we're actually using the old uh, crankshaft. Uh, no, not crankshaft. Um, crank pulley crank pulley that we took off and replaced with the grim speed one so from the previous video so we're using that to put underneath it and then hammer on them and get them to pop out so i'll update you when we're doing that so this is what we're popping out this is from the other one so they're just pressed in there so we got to get a give a good whack on them Now we just gotta do that, you know, two more times and then then we put the spacer on. All right, here's the uh, easier part. This is the part I'm, I'm gonna do just cause you know, I'm a wuss, I guess. <laughs> Letting the leg peel up. So one thing I was, uh, okay, you can make fun of me if you want, but I was a little confused on how to stack these because since it's a one and three eighths, um, they give you a one inch spacer and then they give you a three eighths spacer. So at first I wasn't sure exactly how to do this. You wanna make sure this is underneath it because these are here to clamp it all together. So when you're putting it on there, this is gonna go here, the bolts will go through here, clamp this onto your top hat, and then you'll, have, you'll be left with a, a good spot in order to mount it, so. You might look at it and totally understand it, but my, my son actually had the same exact setup and uh, or the same exact lift. And we were just a little confused by it when we first looked at it for some reason, just because just we had never done it before and never looked at it before, so. Wiggle it on through there. There we go, there we go. We have this on a low torque setting also, so it's not gonna sit there and snap it. There we go. So we got our top hat all set up. Now we're gonna go get this on the strut. Check and see. Yep. Messed that up. There we go. So that's facing this way. Tighten that up a little bit. The springs. Yeah. Make sure grab the threads. Make sure we're all aligned up in here. Yeah, so what you're doing right now is you're aligning it to, to where it's pointed the, the way that it goes for install, right? Is what you're doing? Yeah. Okay. And then back 
those clamps off. Nicely done. Now it goes for the install. All right, so now we are taking a stab at the front. We got the spacers on top of the new Forrester struts. Paul here is doing pretty much all the work because I'm still recovering from my knee surgery. Um, pretty straightforward as far as that goes. I mean, we did have to disconnect the brake line, so we'll have to bleed the brakes afterwards in order to get them out. But there's kind of a side-by-side -side comparison. Um, you can see that it's much, I mean, we're gonna gain probably about two inches of lift off the Forrester struts, right around there. And then the one inch spacer on top, so we're hoping for about three inches of lift. I did get new tires in, so there's the old ones. These are our new ones. Um, it's gonna look fantastic. So hopefully by the end of this video, we should have everything good to go and I'll get you a before, or an after, walk around of the of the Subaru. This is the rear after the, just the Forster struts and now we have another inch and three eighths, I believe it is, um, a spacer to go on top of the strut. So we're gonna maybe even get those ones done today too. So hopefully we get it all done and at the end of this video, you'll be able to see the finished product. tools man okay that's unreal Definitely got some ground clearance now. That's freaking awesome. Got to settle these springs out. We still got, we're gonna go up front and we're gonna bleed out these brakes. Um, I mean, go take it for a little drive, just a small one until we get the alignment done. Just kind of see how it drives, see if there's any rubbing on turns and things like that, so. Definitely, so we did put the two inch trailing arm spacers. So we do got some, uh, I mean, without it, we would have been rubbing without it. So um, I think it's gonna settle down at least probably half inch or so. No, no clearance issues here. So we're gonna be fine there. It doesn't look like there's gonna be really any other clearance issues. So I think we're gonna be good. All right, so it's Jaden's first time seeing it lifted. You, you feel like it's that much different? Much. <laughs> what do you think about it, buddy? Awesome. You think this is gonna work for Moab? Yes. You're confident? It's pretty good out here. So we're gonna go take it for a drive, see if it settles at all, see if there's any rubbing, things like that. It's looking pretty good though. <laughs>